If you've ever been interested in investing in real estate, you've likely heard some of these myths. Today, I'm gonna to debunk all of them. Hey everyone, my name is Casey McEwen. I'm a licensed real estate agent and investor in the Dallas, Texas area. And the first and probably most prolific myth that you hear is you need money. First things first, I've done a ton of veteran videos related to using your VA loan. If you're not familiar with what a VA loan is, it's a loan that is given to veterans who had a honorable discharge and it is a 0% down loan. Now there are gonna be closing costs associated with that loan, but if you work with a good agent, more than likely if you're a veteran using your VA loan, you can get into a house for completely no money out of pocket. Now obviously using your VA loan, you may be using it as a primary residence or you may be using it as an, an opportunity to move in somewhere and turn it into an investment property, but there are a ton of other ways that you can invest in real estate, not just with your VA loan. Just to give you guys a couple examples that you could do to invest in real estate for really no money out of pocket, you can certainly go out and door knock and try to wholesale properties. Essentially what that is, is finding an opportunity with a seller that's willing to sell you the property or the rights to the property and get in on a contract. And then you go off and try to sell it to an additional end buyer. Also, if you've got a good network of people that are looking to invest, you can pool those investors together and create a syndication and be the individual that leads the syndication, therefore getting a return on their money that they're investing while you don't invest any money whatsoever. Real estate investing certainly can be a lot easier if you have money, but do not get discouraged if you're not sitting with a ton of money in your bank account. Trust me, I started with using my VA loan and very little money down. You certainly can get started in investing without much money. The second real estate investing myth that I think I hear just as much as number one is the fact that it's easy. Now, I have personally been learning about real estate investing for a little over five years and actually investing in properties for a little over four years. And I can say firsthand, owning a handful of properties, it is absolutely not going to be easy. I actually filmed a video recently showing my daily routine. Now, honestly, a lot of that is spent building my real estate company. But specifically right now, dealing with a lot of issues on one of my properties that had some issues with the snowstorm here in Dallas, the investing side of my daily routine definitely takes a substantial amount of time. It's definitely taken a lot of time on my real estate company side in order to afford more investment properties, but it's also taken plenty of time just to invest in real estate altogether. Now, when I say it doesn't come easy, there are definitely places that I thought was gonna be much more difficult than it has been. Now, real estate investing is certainly not easy. And I think one of the biggest reasons people deter away from real estate investing is actually they do not want to become a landlord. A landlord because then they have to deal with all the awful tenants that they likely will have. And I can honestly say this is probably one of the easier aspects of real estate investing for me. Now, this myth is obviously going to differ person by person and investor by investor. Now, me personally, right Right off the bat, I actually had to go through an eviction process back in 2018, but now it's almost the middle of 2021 and I've yet to have another eviction. Make sure I knock on wood here. Now there are going to be issues with tenants. That's just part of being a landlord. I can actually run through all of my properties real quick and give you an idea of kind of what I've had to deal with. My duplex personally, I, as mentioned before, had to evict one tenant. I replaced that with a tenant that has since been there with really no issues whatsoever. Now on the flip side, on the other side of the duplex, which is the side of the duplex that I occupied, has had a little bit of pest control issues that we were able to handle. But other than that, over the last three years, I've never had a missed rent from them and no issues. The next property that I purchased was a single family. I went ahead and renovated that entire thing and had roommates while I lived there. Since then, I've been able to rent it out for a pretty premium price to a young couple and their lease is ending in about two or three months. I actually just filmed a video with the intent to sell that and move up to an apartment complex. I've had absolutely no issues with them whatsoever. And I think in the 15 or so months that they've been there on their 18 month lease, I believe all I've had to fix is a garage door for about 500 bucks. Now, after that property, I bought a fourplex. The fourplex has four units, four tenants, which means more tenants than either of the two properties combined. I have actually had someone move out of there, but I was able to actually get it rented really, really quickly after remodeling the unit and getting a little bit higher in rent. And then I actually moved out as well. Again, had no issues really getting a new tenant in there. I do have one tenant there renting month to month, and the intent there is to try to get them to a little bit longer of a lease but it sounds like since one of them is pregnant, they're gonna be moving out shortly. But again, no real issues there whatsoever besides a couple minor repairs. And my last investment is my primary residence. I do have a roommate that I've had absolutely no issues with and an Airbnb that I've had a couple hiccups with, but other than that, all of my tenants on all of my properties overall have given me really no issues. 
The next real estate myth that I'm gonna go ahead and debunk for you guys today is the fact that you should only be buying properties in a buyer's market. First things first, if you're only buying in a buyer's market, you're more than likely not buying anywhere in the country right now. For the most part, I think almost every single area in the country right now is absolutely going insane. I know locally in the DFW market, we're seeing 20, 30 upwards of almost 70 offers on homes. So it is absolutely not a buyer's market, but I can promise you I'm working with handfuls of investors looking to still purchase properties. Now, obviously this is market dependent and obviously some markets are gonna be seller's markets, some are gonna be buyer's markets. Me personally, and absolutely a seller's market. Again, I have buyers wanting to purchase properties and I even have an individual out of Singapore that has a bank account locally in Houston and a rental property in Houston that's wanting to buy two investment properties here locally in the Dallas-Fort Worth area this year and likely two more next year. The intention here is the fact that our market is absolutely exploding. If they purchase a property and they can break even or make a little bit of money on it, they're more than likely going to make a ton of money off of appreciation. Now, it would be certainly ideal if we were in a buyer's market to load up on properties, but I don't think locally here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, we've been in a buyer's market for quite some time. So over the last four years, which have really been a seller's market in the DFW area, if I had never purchased any properties and waited for a buyer's market, I'd be sitting with absolutely no equity right now, which would completely change my overall net worth. Now, if you did have a choice to either buy in a buyer's market or buy in a seller's market, most of the time you would really certainly wanna buy in a buyer's market, but I can tell you, all across the country, people are still buying in a seller's market. Now, the next real estate myth, I can be honest with you and tell you that it's something that I actually thought real estate investing was. Before I even started picking up any kind of podcasts or books to read about real estate investing, all I knew about real estate was HGTV. But I can tell you right now, real estate investing is nothing like HGTV. Now, a lot of the shows that they have on HGTV, I know back when I used to watch it frequently, really just painted a very, very, very pretty picture. Now, some of the times they were saying, hey, you know, we're putting a lot of money in this, but they always, at the end of the day, told you just how profitable, how much money they made, how good they were doing. With investors that didn't make any money from a flip, I can tell you firsthand, it's not always sunshine and rainbows. Now I do have a couple friends that have been on HGTV and they can basically say the same exact thing that I'm telling you right now. It is nothing, and I mean nothing, like the TV shows. The next real estate investing myth that I'm gonna go over with you guys today is the fact that investing in real estate is completely passive. I'm actually gonna give you guys an example of just how not passive real estate investing is. Lately I've been dealing with an insurance claim due to the storms that came through Dallas and busted a ton of pipes. In my duplex itself, one side, the pipes burst and I've been dealing with all the contractors, all of the remediation companies that were good, that were bad, getting paid out by insurance, making sure that they're all paid. And then at the end of the day, not even collecting rent. Now my tenants have been out of the unit for about three or four weeks. Luckily enough, the rent that I am missing is gonna be paid back by insurance. But when you do get a payout by insurance, what usually happens? Yep, your insurance is going to go up. Now there are certain ways that I could absolutely make my rental properties a little more passive. I could just pawn them all off on a property management company, but I can tell you, I want to make as much money for my rental properties as possible, especially with the time that I have on my hands now. So I actually manage all my properties, but I can tell you the next investment purchase that I use will definitely be using a property management company. So once again, real estate investing is definitely not passive. If you want it to be completely passive, you can for the most part, but there's still going to be more work for you to do. The next real estate investing myth that I'm gonna debunk for you guys today is the fact that you should only buy properties in nice neighborhoods. Now, to be honest with you, I have a close friend that only invests in D-class neighborhoods. None of my investment properties are in D-class neighborhoods, but all of my properties are either in a C or B-class neighborhood. Now, if you wanna include my primary, that's probably an upper B or lower A-class neighborhood, but for the most part, my investment properties are definitely not in what you would consider a great neighborhood, but rather, a decent neighborhood. Now that's not to deter you away from investing in great neighborhoods. The thing is, you're gonna really need to find where you fall in that line. Do you want tremendous cash flow, but not a lot of appreciation? You're likely gonna be looking in a lower class neighborhood. If you want only appreciation and very little, if any, cash flow, you're likely gonna be looking in a nicer neighborhood. At the end of the day, it's gonna be based off of what you want and what type of return you need. The next real estate investing myth that I'm gonna debunk for you guys today is the fact that property values only go up. 
Now me personally, I've been investing in real estate, like I said, for four years. I've been fortunate enough for those four years, all of my property values have indeed gone up. But if you've been in real estate or been investing in real estate for more than a couple decades, you likely have seen a tremendous downfall in prices, especially if you're in destinational markets such as Orlando or Vegas, areas that certainly got hit harder in the economic crash. But at the end of the day, real estate investing is certainly one of the most profitable investing opportunities that you can have when it comes to real estate investing your property values may not always go up but for the most part if you're looking long term you're going to be in a pretty good position the last real estate investing myth that i'm going to debunk for you guys today hits home for me because this is actually what i do for a living and that's the fact that agents only care about their commission now me being a local agent in the dallas fort worth area i obviously help tons of investors i invest myself as well i help people sell properties and help people buy properties but at the end of the day I'm here to help. And I can tell you right now, make sure that you interview your real estate agent that you're going to be working with and make sure that they're here to actually help you and provide the value that they should bring in order for you to feel comfortable wanting to work with them. Also on a side note there too, if you are looking to invest, make sure that you connect with a local real estate agent that has actual investment experience. I'm personally here in the Dallas Fort Worth area with a tremendous amount of investing experience. If you're looking to get connected with a local real estate agent that has investing experience in your local area, make sure to leave a comment down below. I have agents across the country that I can connect you with or shoot me an email. My email should be in the description below. Now there are a ton of other real estate investment myths that I would love to debunk for you today, but I think the nine that I went over today are gonna be some of the ones that you likely have heard yourself. So if you're out there looking to invest, just know that a ton of these are not true. So just a little bit of motivation and advice for you if you're an individual that's kind of on edge about whether or not you want to invest in real estate, I say go full force. Now there's certainly a right way and a wrong way to do it, but make sure that you're educated well enough or at least surrounded with a good mentor to make you feel comfortable with the decisions you're about to make. But I can tell you it's absolutely life-changing. Thanks again for watching guys. Make sure to like and subscribe. It really does help and stay tuned for the next video.